the, the important thing to remember here is you compare particularly to the U.S. Uh, banking sector of the euro, euro area banking sector is a far more important provider of credit to, to corporates than it is uh, in, in, in the U.S. where it's about 30%, I think, of corporate borrowing comes from, from the banking sector. As in, in the euro area, it's somewhere closer to 60%. So it's an extremely important source of finance, and therefore the health of the banking sector is, is pretty important when it comes to looking at you know, potential lending trends. Now, what we've seen over the last few years is credit expansion. Again, if you look at any kind of data points, um, you know, the EBA data, for example, on the largest banks, you would see around about a 12% increase in lending over the last four years. Um, but there's a huge amount of variation between by country and also between sort of corporates and household type borrowing. So we've seen around about, um, I suppose, post financial crisis, we had quite a significant contraction between 2012 and 2016 in the euro area, so post the, the euro area financial crisis. And that has now reversed. Um, even some of the largest deleveraging countries like Spain, where we saw corporate borrowing, yeah, corporate lending levels fall by somewhere like 50%, you started to see them come back again and, and the deleveraging bottom out. And I think the main reason, probably, one of the main reasons is to do with the solvency position of the banking sector. Um, on the back of the financial crisis, we obviously had a significant increase in capital requirements and banks have responded and capital levels have increased. Um, so we're now looking at an average capital levels of maybe 14.5% um, common equity tier one versus maybe only 11% two or three years ago. Um, if you are a bank treasurer or CFO, you know, before you can start expanding credit, you need to get your ratios kind of back in order. And on the whole, we're seeing a significant improvement in those capitals in response to requirements. Um, but the capital ratios aren't just the only thing. Obviously, the capital ratios tell one uh, sort of one important aspect or measure of solvency, but they're not the only measure of solvency. Um, if you look at um, asset quality, for example, also that's a very important determinant. So you may have quite a good capital adequacy ratio per se, but if you've got a whole lot of uncovered MPLs and foreclosed assets still, your solvency is still going to be compromised. And we've seen you know, despite the headlines and a lot of newspapers, etc., we have seen quite a significant improvement in asset quality in Europe, down to around about 3.5% NPL level ratios now. Clearly, there's some outliers, don't get me wrong, in Italy, for example. Um, but it's pretty important. You can look at banks. I, would, I like to look at places like Spain, which had such a severe financial crisis. And you see there, you know, I was looking the other day at Caixa Bank, for example, the biggest kind of domestic lender there. Um, leverage ratios haven't really done much over the last several years, but the level of net MPLs and foreclosed assets have come down from kind of in excess of equity to somewhere below 40% of equity now through big MPL sales. So there's a really big freeing up of capital and availability, and I think a lot of that, that's certainly one of the reasons why we've seen a, a pickup again in, in credit expansion, having had that contraction.